Uh-oh. I'm up to something. It's always something going on here at the Cars Created Garage, and uh, today there's a new project taking place, of course, with <laughs> nothing other than the EcoBoost Mustang, HPP EcoBoost Mustang. Now, what am I up to now? Well, do you remember my SHO intake video? Uh, you know, this one right here, right? Where I improved the factory intake system on the SHO by basically cutting a hole in the side and running a flexible pipe down into the fender well where I could pick up even colder air. That in conjunction with the factory ram air that was on the front of the, you know, under the hood, made a pretty effective and cheap intake system for the SHO. But you all know I've already done and replaced the factory intake system on the Mustang here with the Mishimoto. Now that doesn't mean that I can't make improvements because even this is hindered by one big flaw. And even though it takes advantage of the much, much better uh, intake duct here on the Mustangs compared to the SHOs, it still doesn't do a grand job of picking up the coldest air possible. So I'm hoping by the end of this video, I will have a solution that will be a hell of a lot better and ultimately way unique. Something very cool done here to, uh, to the Mustang. So first I'm gonna go ahead and show what I have to do this with. Now, of course we have the flexible pipe that was used for the SHO. Um, you know, I've kept this around just Never know when I was gonna ever use it again, but uh, I guess that would be now. So that's the main part of the uh, of the puzzle here. Sadly, the Mishimoto kit does come with a really nice air filter. The problem is it doesn't have a part in the front where it can pick up air. Like these, uh, like this right here. I could still essentially run this tube from somewhere up into the general area of the air box, but that isn't quite doing what I wanted to do. So of course I ended up buying a, another Spectre air filter. Um, I will eventually probably get a much nicer air filter, probably from like JLT or something. They have really nice filters. I had on my Cobra, I like their filters. And you can get them in blue. But I just want to, before I spend like $60 on an air filter, I, you know, have coupons and discounts and stuff. So I was able to get this a lot cheaper just to see if this is even worth my time. And, uh, you know, for obviously making a video would be pretty cool. So anyway, I just got a nice, decent, cheap Spectre air filter. Same type as this one where it's got the, you know, inlet in the front here, which I'm on a, you know, this is like the adapter piece that adapts this to this. So essentially this pipe is going to run to a specific area in the car to the front of the filter here and hopefully be a super effective cold ram air intake. Now here comes the big question. I've been looking around and what actually gave me this idea is when I was installing the uh, intake here, you know, I noticed that this pretty much goes all the way down to it's all open right here, like straight down. So it's pretty easily accessible. And I'm like, well, you know what? What if you could take this, and I know this has got to be a separate plastic piece here, um, not part of the painted bumper at all. And I'm pretty sure this comes out. It's just clipped in there, I would imagine. Because I'm pretty sure they make replacement pieces. Yeah, I can feel like set the separation. So wouldn't it be cool if I could cut this out right there? and make this an actual vent, an intake vent. So essentially, some, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. That part is unknown, but I would love to be able to get that tube attached to the other end of this and air just gets scooped up right here. It'll go straight up into the intake box. So like, yeah, it runs right up here into the filter because the filter kind of angles down anyway. And yeah, in conjunction with the front intake here, and then that one down there, ultimate cold air. And eventually I will, and I want to try to seal up this box the best I can because there's gaps along the side here and down at the bottom. I wanna to try to make it as sealed as possible. I thought this would be a really cool way 
to make the Mustang a little bit more unique, cheap, and an effective mod that will ultimately help the performance. Unfortunately, with these type of modifications, you know, there's no instructions because it's custom. You have to kind of just figure it out as you go. And while I'm no stranger to that, it does, it does kind of get scary sometimes, especially on a new car like this and you don't want to mess it up or break it or, you know, so, but, I mean, it's relatively straightforward. As long as I can get that plastic piece out of, you know, of the uh, bumper or realize that is a replaceable piece, so if I screw it up, I can easily replace it. I won't cry too much over this. If not, I definitely will run the tube down in that general location anyway, just to pick up a little bit colder air that's not in the hot engine area. But of course, the first thing we gotta do is disassemble the Mishimoto intake and uh, assess the situation. All right, intake out. Let's take a look at uh, what we got. All right, let's take a peek down in here. See, now the only thing that kind of gets in the way, you can see the right down, I don't know how well, you can see if I stuff the camera down in here. Um, yeah, you can see right there are the horns. Um, so they're kind of just chilling there. Um, not the most convenient space, but otherwise, look how open that is. That tube should have no problem contouring right down and if you look, it goes right, oh, I don't know if I can, right down through there. And that's where the vent is, that plastic vent piece, faux vent on the front of the bumper is. Now the good question is, how the hell am I gonna get to it? My guess is, I'm gonna have to go under the car. Take the belly pan off and that's the way I'm gonna access it. And I really don't wanna do that, but I guess I don't have much of a choice, do I? So I'm gonna get that done and uh, I'll uh, update the video as I get that done. Okay, so this got the corner of the belly pan enough to peel it down. First thing I noticed was this excessive amount of gravel. Just um, kind of kind of just chilling in there. Great. <laughs> Secondly, while there is massive amount of space under here, I cannot quite figure out how this piece is in here. Um, it's definitely not secured by anything other than some type of clips or something, but I don't want to mess with it too much because I don't want to break it. I'm not entirely sure. Um, it's, just, it's a little complicated the way it looks like it's held in there. I don't know. I don't know how that's in there, but uh, regardless, I do have plenty of space to run the filter that, um, you know, goes down in here and uh, this area would be a hell of a lot cooler than uh, than what's up top. Now the only other thing I can think I could do, which is also something I'm not really super interested in doing, but is maybe modifying the belly pan to make a scoop. But the thing is, you screw this thing up, and I know these are expensive. So, hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure how to go about this, quite honestly. Like I said, when you do these type of custom jobs, you, you know, things change on the fly. You don't know what you're expecting. I think if I just run the hose down in that general area, it will be pretty good. I mean, that's still going to be a lot more shielded down there than up in this general area so it should help with the overall intake of air cooler air so i'm gonna go ahead and snake the tube down in there and see if i can just remotely put it in a place where it makes the most sense i think that's the best we can do right there so you know it's just kind of chilling down down there at the uh, yeah we're just gonna hang out down there i'm not qualified enough to want to you know, try to figure that out, you know, and how to take that piece off. I'm sure someone somewhere knows how to do it. It's just not me and I don't want to break it. So maybe one day in the future, um, we can revisit this idea and have it done maybe professionally. Right now, budget wise, not allotted. <laughs> but uh, let's see, let's get, 
let's go ahead and mock up the filter here and uh, let's get that set up. All right. So I know you're kind of looking at things at a weird angle. Um, you'll be okay. Let's just pull this up here and there we go. I'm gonna have to get a clamp just to stick on there real quick. So we got it all buttoned together now. Um, I guess the only thing left to do is to go take a drive and see if it made any difference. I know just because I keep an eye on it a lot that my intake temps at this, this sensor right here is usually within 10 degrees of ambient on average, you know, driving around. If it's, of course, when you're sitting and everything gets all heat soaked, that's one thing, but like driving around, it usually stays within 10 degrees sometimes, you know, it's even one or two degrees from ambient temperature, which is good. So, you know, I don't think it's possible to get under ambient temperature because that is the temperature. But if I can get it closer to ambient and, you know, if it can recover faster, that's good. It's all gonna help, um, you know, bring colder air in more consistently and prevent heat soaker to help overcome heat soak longer. So, but I'm gonna get myself cleaned up here real quick. I'm a little dirty and I hope Got to put my hat back on. I stepped on it, so I got a bunch of dirt all over it. Look, oh my god, freaking idiot, man. But regardless, um, yeah, I'm gonna get cleaned up and we'll go take a drive and check out and see if it made any difference whatsoever. Oh, come on, just vacuumed. What the hell? There, there we go. That's good. <clears throat> all right, fire up here. All right. Inlet air temp is 96, and now that's fired the car at 96 degrees. Well, just for reference, it is 74 degrees outside. Inlet air temp, 95 degrees. So it's gonna, let's go drive around and see if that makes any difference. Immediately it's starting to go down, which is good that's to be expected it's not too hot under there you know you, the car's been sitting a little bit so it's had time to cool down and i had the hood up so it wouldn't heat soak before i did this test we're already down 10 degrees and we've just started moving so that's good just a little throttle there you can see it jumped down to 83 so we're still within range where it was before. Like I said, it would, you know, cruising around, moving, it would stay within, about within 10 degrees of ambient until it got heat soaked. So we're not far off from there. We're still right in the, right in the same range it was. So let's, uh, I'm gonna drive around a little bit and, uh, you know, see how it does and we'll catch back up with, uh, with the results here. So I've been driving around just a little bit here. Normal driving, nothing crazy. And uh, yeah, the temps are about <laughs> a lot, I think consistently lower than it was before. I mean, it's a slight improvement, I believe. It's not a massive difference. Um, actually, right now, according to the car, the ambient temperature has went down to 71 degrees outside. Um, so in our intake temp right here, 74, just cruising. And if I just kind of roll into it, 73. You know, it drops down to 72. You know, it was getting really close to ambient and it happens quickly. And I guess that's because it's pulling in, you know, it's pulling in less hot air. Whereas before it had no choice but to, you know, suck the hot air first before it could start pulling in cold air. But yeah, so far, so good. All right, once we get around the bend here, I'm gonna do a little pull and, you know, to see how the car feels. I mean, I doubt I'm really gonna get any power increase, but it makes good video, why not? <laughs> All right, here we go. 60 roll. Oh God. Let's do another 
another one uh, from 30. All right, 30. 30 roll. <laughs> eh, this car is fun. I th it feels about as fast as the SHO was, and I guess that's because it's a lot lighter, even though it's not probably making near the same power. It, like, from a roll, it feels about as fast. Not too bad. Definitely livable power. Definitely fun power. But yeah, not too bad, even after them hard pulls. I'm 77 degrees uh, intake and 74 ambient temp, so they're not, uh, they're not jumping up as quickly. So it is helping recover intake temps, which is good. That's part of what I wanted. But otherwise, at least it's, you know, a slight improvement over it was. So, you know, I don't feel too bad about it. But yeah, we're definitely going to have to revisit this sometime in the future and see what improvements we can make. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Share with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this, go ahead, subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for the next True Car Enthusiast video.